Welcome to the Republican Professor. Today we have Brenda Lebsack with us. Hi, Brenda. Are, hi, Brenda. We hi. Are, I'm I'm uh, Lucas in Orange County, where Brenda is. Um, I know it doesn't look like Orange County, but we recently in Orange County uh, inserted a huge bridge just outside of uh, <laughs> Newport Beach. So, and then uh, we got Curtis joining us from his luxurious scholarly library <laughs> in his mansion there in texas and i'm surprised he doesn't have a cigar with them and maybe like you know um side-by-side -side shotgun to do some skeet shooting or something like that and brenda you're in tell us what city you're in i'm in i teach in santa Ana unified okay and i was a school board member in orange unified school district okay but I've taught in a lot of districts in Brenda. California, San Jose, Huntington Beach, and I taught in Las Vegas, Nevada as well. Brenda, thank you for joining us. And for those who don't know, I, I want to give you this code right here. This is a holiday. This is President's Day, which means there's no school today, right, Brenda? Is that right? Correct. That's why Brenda is able to join us today. <laughs> which also gives you some more information, which is that she believes in what she's going to share with you today so much that she's giving up a holiday in the morning to like join our podcast and talk about this stuff, which is work. I mean, this is, you know, yeah, it's work. So Brenda, we are so grateful for you to share your expertise with us this morning. Welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. Great to have well, you. Well, let me share a little, just a personal anecdote. Just, I don't have much because I've never met you in person, but we usually just started off with a, some kind of personal warm anecdote. And the anecdote I got is, um, I'm one of my best friends is a music teacher in Santa Ana Unified School District. I'm pretty sure that's his district. And, um, he um, he's a veteran school teacher for, I think, 15 years or something like that. And he said, you have to meet this lady. You got to meet her. She's <laughs> she is so courageous and fearless and has so much expertise. And I'm impressed because I spent 15 years in the college uh, classroom uh, and some of those college classrooms were in LA USD high schools. <laughs> and um, because the LA uh, Community College District would send me into the LA USD high schools to uh, teach. Um, but uh, I have a lot of experience in the big state universities and private universities and community colleges. And it turns out in high schools too, private high schools as well. So I'm concerned about K through 12 because. I get the result of K through 12 and this is what I have to work with. And I, you know, so it helps me un understand what I'm seeing in my classrooms, mm -hmm. you know, what's going on there. So Brenda, how did you first get into teaching? Well, I've been teaching since 1990. <clears throat> and um, I started as a kindergarten teacher at private school. And then, but before that I was in probation, Orange County probation department. Um, so, you know, I, and then I became an elementary school teacher, fourth graders in public school, um, actually in Riverside uh, County for California. And then um, went into special education, started teaching junior high and then high school in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, public school. Um, and then um, I also have my PE credentials. So I coached uh, soccer and field hockey. And um, then I ended up getting another uh, credential where now for the last seven years, I've been an adopted PE teacher where I'm teaching um, elementary, junior high kids who have disabilities PE. So I go school to school. I'm in a lot of schools. It's kind of like doing Special Olympics every day. It's a wow. fun job. That's wow. great. Awesome. That's so cool. 
So what I hear from you is I think your heart is you have, you really have a heart for kids. Absolutely. And I've been in children's ministry for years. Okay. Uh, my husband's a pastor, so we've been in ministry for 30 years and my, my dad was a minister too. So. Oh, wow. Uh, this just permeates every part of your life. Yeah. Pretty much. Yes. Awesome. Curtis has a background in coaching and teaching and he's got how many kids do you have now? Uh, I think we're up to five, five last, kids. Last I counted. <laughs> yeah. Now, does yeah, that, that, does that include you or is that? <laughs> well, six, cause my dad's living with us. So we're actually, Oh up. no. Hopefully you're with, <laughs> you're outside of earshot for that one. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, you know, a lot, I've, I've got experience in the, teaching in the college classroom and in the high school classroom. Um, and I'm, I have the same concerns Lucas has. My, my wife is, is probably more experienced. Well, she is more experienced than me for sure on the K through 12. She's been a second grade teacher for, for 10, somewhere between 10 and 15 years. Um, and there's enough to worry about uh, just teaching these kids life coping skills uh, and have to have it exacerbated, the problems exacerbated by it, the stuff that's going on that you're going to talk about with us. Well, let's, let's, um, let's get into some of that because Brenda, um, I'm, I was going to ask you, when did you start to notice concerns that you have about things? It's when I started attending in 2015, I started attending um, teacher union conferences for the first time. And I had been in teaching for 20 years and had never actually gone to a teacher's union conference. So once my kids were grown and out of the house, I thought, well, maybe I should get involved in my union and find out more about it um, rather than just pay the dues. And so when I looked online and saw the titles of the conferences, I noticed that there wasn't much dealing with academics. It was LGBT, <laughs> LGBTQ, it was human rights, it was yeah. um, social justice, but very little having to do with academics. Oh, uh, man. And that that's when so my much. first experience, that's when my, the red flag started. What year was that? Going. Um, 2015. What? That, that explains so much, Brenda, right there. Academic excellence. See ya. And then po- democratic politics. Welcome. Yeah, it's just activism. Well, there's always been some politics on campuses, but because of the unions, right? That, that's, a, that's a political issue. But to bring it into the classroom, tell us... Um, well, do you want me to tell you my union experience that gave oh, you the yeah, yeah, flag? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, because I had I didn't it know was if you were one. comfortable talking about that. No, I was, okay. I was giving you a way out, but then I no, remember. I've wait, already it's Brenda. written I've written yeah. articles about it. Um okay. so you're out of, you're basically out of um I went into a workshop and one of the lobbyists for the California Teachers Association, after the workshop, I asked him because it was about diversity, and I said, you know, I used to teach. English high school in Las Vegas. I had a very diverse classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I said, it was a very Mormon uh, community actually that I was in. But one of the kids um, during a discussion said, well, I believe that marriage is between a man and a woman and that gender is God ordained. I asked the lobbyist, how should have I addressed that to the student to respect the diversity of my classroom? Mm -hmm. And his answer to me was, you should treat that student as though he said black people should be burned at the state. Wow. Okay. That was when wow. my eyes were opened. And, th- wow. and that was in 2015. Yes. Wow. And so I went to another conference. I went to the LGBTQ conference um, a year later, but this time I asked friends to come with me because I said, you're not going to believe things I'm hearing and no one will believe me unless I have witnesses. And yes. um I did, I had some friends come with me. One was actually a former superintendent from the LA area, um, who is also an immigrant from Columbia. And um, she's Catholic. And we went into a workshop and I raised my hand and said, you know, I had this 
situation with the lobbyists and this was his response. Do you agree with this? Because I thought maybe this was just a red herring. Yeah. You know? a one um, and or then just that he, one person, you know, right. maybe it's just that yeah. one person is crazy. Right. But this um, workshop leader was the CTA California Teachers Association LGBTQ caucus president. And he basically without any hesitation agreed with them. And my two friends were floored and there was no gasps in the room. Um, it was a workshop of about 40 teachers that seemed all like-minded. So I thought, so okay, you're we've got abuse, some problems. We've so you're supposed issues. to abuse your Mormon students basically. And well, that under the guise of diversity. Well, it was basically, there is no tolerance really tolerance is not a priority or value anymore. It's you believe what we believe, or How do you you're going to be diversity? labeled a bigot and a racist. How yeah. do you respect diversity without tolerance? I don't understand that. What that's what I probably would have asked, but I mean, you know, I'm a college professor, but I, I guess I'm a little bit naive, but, but yeah, I mean, Brenda, that must've put you in such a weird, awkward, what were you feeling at that time? Um, disgust. <laughs> and were you um, scared? Were you I was offended, but I had another um, situation where the former CTA president named Eric Hines, um, he gave a speech right before the um, Friedrichs for CTA Supreme Court hearing. Yep. And he referred to the plaintiffs and to Friedrichs, Rebecca Friedrichs, as a spawn of Satan. She was a teacher, right? Yes, she is a teacher. A and teacher. I called at that moment, I, I went to my hotel room and I called the president of the Christian Educators Association. And I didn't know about this Supreme Court hearing. And he told me about it. And I said, who are, who are the plaintiffs? He said, well, the Christian Educators Association are part of the plaintiffs. I said, oh, so I was just called the spawn of Satan. That's crazy. And what do you think was behind that comment? Was it the same kind of hatred and intolerance that you felt was behind the first comment that you re referenced about treating them like they're part of the well, con democratic confederacy? I, I was able to deal with these comments head on um, because I ran okay. into Eric Hines at a conference mm -hmm. and I asked him, and this was years later, I asked him and said, why did you call the plaintiff spawns of Satan? He didn't deny that he did it because actually I told him I recorded it on my phone and I have the recording to this day. Um, he said that, oh, I was just exaggerating. It was a hyperbole. And I'm like, that is not something you exaggerate about. Um, and I didn't believe it. And then the other person, the CTA uh, president who said that I actually work with them in one of my schools. And so I asked him, you know, how can you, and this is a, a man who has been championed in the National Educators Association as the, um, he was receives awards for champion of inclusion for the nation because he helps write laws um, like Senate Bill 48, the FAIR Act, he helped write that for California. And so he's seen as a hero. And I asked him, how can you represent the teachers of California when anyone who doesn't believe like you, you s equate them with the KKK? And he's, his response was, well, everyone has a bias and religion is protected. So you have nothing to worry about. I is said, he, well, if you're in charge, I don't think that's gonna be protected much longer. Is he, uh, is he a Democrat, do you think? <laughs> I didn't no, ask no, I him, mean, but I'm sure. Look, is, I, I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, I don't honestly want to get too far into Democrat Republican. I know you are. Honestly, I am working with a lot of Democrats right now because um, I am working across the lines because this is um, putting a people, lot of people in danger. Are there danger. people that will work with you? I'm working strongly with the Muslim community. Okay, good. I'm. Yes, I am. I'm reaching out to, I'm reaching out to the gay and lesbian community. I am reaching out to the NAACP. 
Um, I'm reaching out everywhere because parents, for one, are being deceived because of the things going on in our schools right now. They, they're changing definitions of gender identity being unlimited gender choices and parents, especially minority um, parents are being left in the dark, um, especially non-English speaking immigrant communities of which I work in, they're being completely left in the dark. And we have mental health workers coming in that are trained to affirm all these many genders that the state is bringing in through our, through our school libraries, through our cartoon. It's not just through sex education. This is being brought in in every subject level, yeah. anti-bullying, diversity, equity, inclusion, English language arts, social studies. And um, yeah. can you tell people what the CTA is? I noticed you, know, you use that term. Okay, yeah, it is the California Teachers Association. So it's okay. the state um, teachers union. Okay, so that's not a government agency. It's it's a it's a private political group, right? It's what the teachers pay about a thousand dollars a year to be part of, and most teachers aren't involved in the politics of it. Okay. Most are just putting in their dues because they think that the union is out to protect their jobs, to give them higher raises, to give them better benefits, better retirements, and so do they, they endorse, just kind of go along to get along. They, Let's uh, just cover this really quick and then we'll get to the content. Do they endorse candidates? And can you find that information online? I, I'm not saying you need to say, but can how do we help people understand where they are on the political spectrum? Well, they definitely... Um, do they, is, is that public record? Can we find out who the CTA endorses for candidates? Well, I mean, like the NEA, um, Yes. Biden's Biden's wife is an NEA member. Yeah. So she I get the mailers. I get I get C okay. I get CTA mailers. So I know oh, the okay. answer to my question. Oh, I'm I sorry. Know the, so I know for you know a fact you that they're Democrats. You probably know more yeah. than I do about yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. All I know is absolutely. You might want to answer your own question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Well, I'm. I'm. Let me just for the sake of of time, just because I want you to make sure you get to your your content here, but this. Brenda is in a delicate situation because <clears throat> she's trying to work with uh, people that are the other the side she's talking about would consider key parts of their constituency, I would say. I think that's pretty safe to say. So it's it's a delicate thing to try to reach out to the community and try to to educate people on what you think the powers that be are doing wrong. Uh, if, if, um, if you come under the spotlight of people in power. Well, and it's important the, the, to note like the, the way in which you approach each of these groups, right? Like the, for instance, a, a lot of women are becoming ostracized, uh, seeing the ostracization of, I think I said that right, but of what's happening with the transgender movement and men infiltrating sports, for example. Um, and I, I am aware, I have several homosexual acquaintances that they are also concerned about like, hey, if, we're, if we allow this fluidity to go on, that's also going to put us in the same boat as people who think more, you know, more heterosexually. Um, and th they have their lifestyle. We have ours. We want to keep it that way. We're all going to be in the same boat. And so there's there's conservative values that string through even the, the most unconservative people. So that's good for you. To, yeah, I love that you're connecting those things. This is yeah, very well, actually the way it happened with the Muslim community is, um, you know, I am a person of faith and I, I never hide my faith. Um, are you, they are know you I'm Muslim? A Christian. Are you I'm Muslim? A Oh, I'm you're Christian. Christian. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So um, my husband's a Nazarene pastor. Oh. Um, used to be Foursquare, but anyways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> basically, what happened is when I started uh, deep diving into the curriculum as a board member and looking at the links that were being recommended to students, I saw these, they were targeting Muslim kids. And they literally had an Arabic and English 
saying, oh, wow. I'm Muslim, but my gender doesn't fit me. And they, mm -hmm. when I read it, it said, Whoa. How the, yeah, it said how the Quran and the prophets endorsed many genders and many different sexualities. And <laughs> wait, I'm wait, wait, hold on. Hold, okay, hold on a second. What you just said. Uh -huh. Wait, so you saw this with your own eyes? Yes. Are, did you say that you were a school board member? Yes. You were elected? Yes. That's an elected position. For four years. I was with the Orange Unified School District. Wow. That's impressive. 2016 to 2020. Very recent. I forgot wow. to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's like a key thing there, Brenda. Yeah, that's, I, that's like, so yeah, you got elected. Yes, no, okay. So yeah, you're not just some crazy whack. You got elected. <laughs> you were a public official and you're seeing curriculum, right? Yes. This yes. is legitimate. So, okay. Okay. I got you. Yes. So when I saw this, I thought, you know, this is so wrong. They are lying to these kids. I mean, oh my God. behind wow. parents' backs. So I, I sought out an imam in my community and I, sh I brought the curriculum to him. And of course it was disturbing. And so he connected me to other imams. So I had mosques asking me to speak to parents. And I spoke on some Muslim TV shows. I've spoken on many. And um, I've just been showing them the curriculum that they're lying to their kids about behind their backs. It's so wrong. Wow. Brenda, would you like me to start sharing your slides? Do you want to go through a your presentation sure. okay let me um well you know what why don't we stop for one second sure. i want to i want to share some things that aren't on the slides um, yeah yeah that's yeah. happening right now so okay this i don't have on the slide but this just showed up now in my elementary school district um and preschool wow. so i teach preschool kids too mm. and it's called what are your words and it's a oh. book about pronouns can so you hold you that can... up to the camera a little bit more um and then raise it up a little bit yeah i see yeah there you go okay I what are your it. words it looked like it said she he and then your fingers were over something else that had like well, an x on it here's it has different pronouns e wow. m they them z zir he him they them wait they're trying to get kids to make up their own language a m i don't know how to say that one E M. Well, it's because it's not in English. It's not English. <laughs> yes. This page tells kids that that pronouns are like the weather and they can change their gender according to their feelings, like the weather changes. Wow. Okay. So I could be a I can be a boy one day and at for breakfast and at lunch I feel I feel like a girl. Or maybe yes. at, at, by the end of the day, I just feel like they because it's just been a hectic day. Yes, it's completely fluidity. Yeah, and, and um, if you're fluidity. if you're a meteorologist and you you're not very good at predicting the weather, then what about this? <laughs> How do you know you're going to yeah. feel tomorrow? Well, that's what what's interesting is they're saying this is an inborn trait, but if you're saying something's fluid, how can it be inborn if it's changeable? Interesting, right? And how can you compare it to skin color? Skin color can't be changed. You're born. With oh, it. that's a good point. That's a really right? good point. Or sexual orientation, because that was when I read the uh, my PhDs in public law, and I read the I did a lot of work on the the marriage redefinition cases when they came down, and a key part of the argument for the re marriage redefinitions cases was that sexual orientation doesn't change according to science, according to psychology. That's what they were arguing. Well, then now it's like this uh, the same political entity. They keep adding letters. They didn't have the letters back in 2015, and they just called themselves LGBT. I think that, I don't even think they used the T back then because it they were about redefining marriage. Well, anyway, but um, the the whole they were not talking about fluidity at all. They were, mm -hmm. in fact, it was all it's permanent. So because it's permanent, then. Uh, I'm not going to change. Marriage has to change. Marriage has to change to accommodate me. And if you get in my way on this, that means that you are some kind of um, really horrible, hateful person. That was kind of thing. So now then as soon as they got the marriage definition changed through the Supreme Court, five votes on the Supreme Court, 
then it seemed like it was very quick. It was like, it seems like it was just months later that I saw in my classroom, people start talking about fluid stuff. Hmm. And I was like, well, wait, hold on. So then I, the way I just, the way I understood that was an ancient philosophy d- d- dichotomy between Heraclitus and Plato. Neither one of those were Christians. Those were ancient Greeks. And Heraclitus thought that everything changes. He, his famous quote was, you can't step into the same river twice. And a lot of people see the world that way. That's how they actually see the world. Nothing stays the same, including definitions. And Plato was the opposite of that in, that, in the sense that he thought that the ideas never change and the ideas are the most real thing. And so marriage never changes. By the way, Plato had sex probably with men at some point. <laughs> and he thought marriage is between a man and a woman doesn't change how I feel Plato, uh, even though he might have homosexual feelings that has nothing to do with what marriage is, um, as a, as a relationship any more than it has anything to do with brother, sister relationship or, um, other kind of relationships. We don't think that change, but anyway, um, so this interesting, I mean, a little bit of philosophy and that's how I look at it, but, um, well, my- I, I- I'm sorry. I, I, I'm curious, Brenda, is this, is this like just a one-off book that's come in or, or no, what? there's a lot of books. Um, you can find the NEA, the National Educators Association partners with the human rights campaign and the human rights campaign has a curriculum source called welcoming schools. And I have videos with, um, curriculum, curriculum samples of the preschool and elementary books. Um, that talk about unlimited gender choices for kids based on their feelings. Um, So my website is www.brenda4kids, the number four. So a lot of those videos are on there um, as well as articles Mm. and Mm. very good videos. Yeah, very good samples. But this book here says um, you might feel like a boy. You might feel like a girl. You might feel like both a boy and girl or like neither. You might feel like your gender changes from day to day or from year to year. That's Brenda, can you hold that up to the can you hold that up to the screen just for a few seconds so that we can get an idea of and young young kids that that you know maybe young particularly young kids coming from broken homes or or you know just a difficult situation they're looking for leadership they're looking for for uh role models and heroes um to guide them through life they're so impressionable oh and if they are we, hitting the kids and leaving the adults in the dark oh, it's so here's one about babies oh awful and it says and now notice this is a child of color yeah just just to clarify Curtis, you weren't saying the black child was awful, right? Oh, you no. Said, you said awful just as. Oh, that's awful. Someone's, <laughs> someone's going to take a clip of that and share it a million times and it's going to go viral. So you're <laughs> not saying that, you're not killed. saying the baby is awful. OK, <laughs> no, no, no. no. Just FYI. What, okay. the, what the page says is when you were born, you couldn't tell people who you were, or how you felt. They looked at you and made a guess. Maybe they got it right. Maybe they got it wrong. In other uh, words, they're guessing based on your genitalia if you're a girl or boy. So if my when my sister was born, we were just guessing. Yes, you make a guess, and then they say gotcha. that maybe a child by the age of three can start telling you what based they think on what they though? Are. What what can they? What are they? What based based on what are they basing it on? Like the John Wayne movies, and the the three year old is watching Chisholm, or you know watching uh, old uh, Big Jake <laughs> or something. Well, they have a gender wheel. They have a gender wheel that helps kids sort it out. And actually, I do have it in the other room if you want me to go get it. Sure. But it might I would love to it. see that. Yeah. Do you, I mean, if you want to. Uh, okay. But I'm, I'm wondering what the gender wheel is based on. Is that Okay, so the on? gender wheel is like you roll it and it's based on what you like. And uh-huh. mostly like what you like and you know those kinds so of she things. likes but, john wayne she's john and wayne. how you I feel mean, i don't understand that okay. but what's on the gender wheel those aren't guesses 
Is that what they're asserting? Those are, those, those are. Oh, certain. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Can, yeah. How, how come the gender that, wheel is only more, a child a can only a child can choose that gender that's right for them. And that gender could change. So. Wow. Now, this is not based on science, is it, Brenda? Well, as far as you can see, to the National Educators uh, for Young Children, which is part of the master plan for the universal preschool program under Biden, oh, um, wow. their glossary, which is on my website, says that gender identity is defined as expansive and fluid viewed by science. I'm going to share your website here. There Brenda, you go. That, Brenda, there four you. kids. This is Brenda for kids. You got a, you got lots of interesting videos. This is a, looks like a three minute, four minute video. Um, let me just play like a, a second of sure. it or two. Sure. People can see. While you do that, I'll go get the gender wheel. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Hi, my name is Brenda Lebsack. I'm a teacher in Santa Ana Unified School District in Orange County. I'm also a school, school board member in Orange Unified School District. And I'm here to share with you some books and curriculum um, that are put out for teaching gender identity in the elementary grades, um, free to be, for pre-kindergarten through fifth grades. A book about non-binary gender pronouns reads, you can change pronouns from he to she or from she to he. You can use new ones like Z or create your own like tree. Or create your own like tree. No, I don't need to, you to help me. That is crazy. No, 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 uh, YouTube. I don't need you to help me figure out what I'm going to watch next. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you can create so your own like tree. So there, is this an official book that they want to use in school? Brenda? This gender wheel or this which is, which one which book? I'm on the one on your website on your first video oh, and the one that one you shared with us earlier. Call yourself a tree. Oh, or call, creating uh, pronouns. Call, I guess that would be a third person pronoun. But yeah, the tree thing is that is this a is this an official book that's being considered for inclusion in the curriculum? Yes, for public school or is it in the curriculum right now? I haven't seen it, but it's definitely in the public libraries in Texas as well. Yes. My daughter lives in Texas and she saw this book in, uh, I think she was in the Arlington. The, yeah, there, there was library. a little, there was a, and I know for here in Coppell, there was a uh, little controversy. Some parents got up in arms about some of the books they found in the library. Okay. Like, what yes. do you, what so, do you ladies so this is not being taught in the classroom. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm sure it is being taught okay. in the classroom. It really depends on the teacher. Now, oh, you might okay. say, <laughs> yeah. here's the deal. Um, we have a board policy called academic freedom, and it gives a loophole to where even if a board um, votes against this curriculum, uh, based on the academic freedom policy, teachers could bring mm. these books in. Mm. And since our union is training activists and and the unions are the ones protecting the teachers. So, and telling them what their rights are and what they can do and how they can do it and how they can go behind parents' backs and be sneaky about it. Um, they say that? They, um, is yes, that well that known or is that, is that your conjecture? If you go to um, Abigail Schreier, uh, uh, there's been a lot of articles coming out through the Daily how Signal, you, the Daily Wire, Epic okay. Times. Yes. How do you spell the last name? What was the last name? Ab Abigail something? Oh, Abigail Schreier. S-H-R-I-E-R. She wrote the book, Irreparable Damage. Okay. You yeah, recommend she's that doing book? Great, she's doing great work. I mentioned in her book as because I helped show her curriculum. Um, but anyways, um, I forgot where I was going. <laughs> I think you were you going to share the gender wheel or something? Oh, yes. Okay. here's the gender will it says it's based on your body your identity and your expression i have i am and i like so you turn it and i said i like do i like puzzles swimming cooking you know you choose what you like i am 
a boy, girl, both, neither. Um, How confusing. I can't imagine being sure. exposed to that as a kid. And then uh, it's so I mean, good. What, are, yeah. what are kids, impressionable kids supposed to make of this? I don't understand that. Well, if you watch like one of my videos, I think it really actually, I think we should take the time to watch that one video okay. uh, because it really explains it. Okay. It's the I'm first video to... on my Google slides. Okay. Hold on a sec. Cause I have a sound issue on my end. Okay. And if I unplug it's... this, then. No, I can talk while Hold you're doing that. Okay. It, um... The LGBTQ, Q means queer or questioning. So once a kid is unsure about their gender and they give them all these choices of sexualities and genders, yeah. then they're considered a Q okay. for questioning. And then they're put into the LGBTQ category, which opens them up to a lot of mental health services. And the mental health workers are already in our schools. I got and you. as I've asked some of the mental health workers in our schools, I asked some of these young newly uh, employed people how are you trained to um, define gender identity? And they said that it's a choice. And I said, and if a kindergartner comes to you and says he thinks he's both genders and wants to go by the pronoun of tree, how are you trained to deal with that? And the mental health worker said, I must affirm it. And I said, well, then, okay. If you go to media and videos, it's one of my videos. That's just crazy that... Uh... Click and then I right said, now. what if, what if the kid says, don't tell my parents, my parents won't like this. And he, she said, I can't tell the parents unless the child gives me permission. So when I went to my principal about this, he said, um, well, we have to make school a safe place for all children. And I said, so is the definition of a safe place deceiving parents? Oh, right. Oh, wow. That's a good, what, that's did, what, did, good. what did that person say? Um, I was referred to human resources <laughs> for disciplinary action. Or being concerned about parents. I or, was being unprofessional by questioning. Or re-indoctrination. Well, if you're questioning, doesn't that mean you're part of the, the group <laughs> and you need, now you can get the services? Right. I just have to be questioning your question. gender yeah. or sexuality. Oh, only that. So you can't That's question right. what they're doing. Right. Ah, you can't I got question you. Question what they're doing. You can only question. Okay. Why don't you um, scroll down a little bit more here? Okay. Okay, and I'll show you which one it is. It was actually the first one on my Google slide, but I'm not sure if you had that. Okay. I have a lot about school. Oh, choice. it's on your Google slide. Let me go to back. To it that is. Tab. It's the first. It's the first one on my Google slide. One moment. No problem. So um, I think it's also important while you're getting that is in the ethnic studies model curriculum, what they're doing is they are, uh, they're basically saying that genders and sexualities are ever evolving and ever expanding. So when they put that in the ethnic studies, I sent a request to the California Department of Ed asking for them to include one sentence exempting pedophilia from a future sexuality and they refused to do it wow they refused twice i put it in writing twice and they refused so it's my first um my very first google so, slide so in that sense pedophilia would be considered a a gender or a sexuality yes which, which a gender or a sexuality it's or actually called map minor attracted persons oh so that's a gender no that's a sexuality okay i i the, all these things that, that brenda, that brenda this is now. you have to be patient oh. with us because we're like the yeah, anyway so, I'm, I'm so happy you're here all of these things that are being labeled now used to be uh like in the in the diagnoses it seems to me uh, you know, in, in the psychology manuals, you mean the uh, DSM? Yeah. The DS that was trying to come up with the gender, yeah. gender dysphoria and, is in the DSM right and, now, but now we're taking all those previous diagnoses and creating new ones and just saying they're all okay. Oh well, yeah. The American psychological association. 
I got I got I got all of this. I got I got to correct something that Curtis just said. Curtis said we. <laughs> no, it's not we. Right. It, I'm not if doing. If you want to play that video, I think it really explains it. Okay, let's quickly. let's try that, Brenda. Okay. See if I can get or, it. No, I, I'm not. Well, nothing's happening. It's okay. No worries if you can't do it. People can watch the video. I can um, show you this right here. Is This is the special education information system, and it shows the word non-binary as a third. Here's the deception. People mm, think yes. it's a third gender, but it's not. Non-binary is an umbrella term encompassing unlimited gender choices. Well, it's an interesting Here's phraseology there because I... I hear people on the college campuses say there's a difference between sex and gender. They were starting to say that. And then that was kind of the opening to all the stuff they're doing, because I always thought sex and gender were the same thing. Like, you know, my sister, her gender is female. Uh, her gender is female and she's a woman. The same thing. And I notice on this thing, it just says gender, male or female, that's sex. So they agree. And, you know, at Facebook too, if you go to Facebook, um, it says my gender is male. It doesn't say man, it says male. And male is, is sex. It's a biological category. So, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Yes. Well, the California Department of Ed gives the definition of non-binary. I see that. And you'll see... I don't know. Let's see. I don't know why it got cut off. There we go. Is that go. clear enough? Is that big yes, enough? Do I clear. need to? That's okay. clear. Um, basically, this is giving 11 different genders. It says transgender, intersex, agender, gender queer, gender fluid, two spirit, bi gender, pan gender, gender non conforming, or gender variant. Gender but it's spirit. not limited to that. Yes. But they've <laughs> listed at least 11. Or I don't know, maybe maybe it's nine or ten. I can't remember. <clears throat> and this form actually tells schools that they can change a child's gender category without parent knowledge or permission. That part blows me away. Yeah, you can go to this and and read it for yourself. Go to this what's document. The, what's the website? Just just well, Google meaning of non-binary, non-binary California Department of Education. Do you think it would come up? It might, if not, I can definitely send you the link. And I believe I do have it on my website as well. Okay. I have the documents on my website and on my website, um, they can be read in any language. I have a Google feature on it. I'm gonna just search it really quick. Cause I wanna see. Sure. I have something that's in the way here from Zoom. It's like, there's a Zoom thing. Okay, so I'm gonna, meaning, can, is it going to let me um, binary non non binary? Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's either non binary or binary. And it, <laughs> you'll get that joke at 3 a.m. Uh, non binary, non binary meaning California Department meaning. of Education. There we go. Thank you, Google, for helping me. There's a frequently asked questions. This is the government website. Yeah. Okay, this actually, this document is very important as well because it's talking about AB 1266. Now, I want to show you something here. Scroll to the top. Okay. Okay, um, look at... Let's see, there's usually a date somewhere at the top that says when this first came out. But what I realized is, mm -hmm. I don't know why it's not there. Go to the very, very bottom. Okay. Because what they do is they come out with these Q and A's and then you'll see last review, September, yeah. 2021. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this document first came out maybe four or five years ago. And so people don't think to look at it again the same document. Okay. They think, Oh, I've already read that. I already like even lawyers. I already read that. I already know what it says. 
because yes. they don't really tell you when they revise it. Right. I okay? see. I and see they do saying. some very um, significant revisions. Gotcha. For instance, on this on this document, um, I can't remember exactly which Q&A it is. I would have to look, uh, but I do have it written down somewhere. I think it's question eight or something. Anyways, okay. it says that it says a parent or mental health worker. The word or is significant. A parent or mental health worker can validate number, number six validate a child's gender identity so basically you don't really have to have a parent validating when you use the word or it can right. just be a mental health worker and age is not um it does age, age isn't a factor mm -hmm. it be any age but okay. yeah these are these are i have read these pretty yes. thoroughly this is where the entrapments come. Yeah, that's right. Well, anytime you get into very technical legal stuff and you try to, what they're trying to do is collapse the politics into legal stuff so that um, yeah. there's no, there's no um, wiggle room. All right. So what do we got here on this slide? This is the center of disease control and prevention gives a definition for non-binary. Mm -hmm. um, which says gender creative, which means kids can make up or create their own genders. Mm -hmm. Oh, what, what did I just do? Okay. So gender creative. Brenda, it sounds like you're laser focused on this gender thing. And so what do you, what, what year was it? Was it 2015 when you, did you say that you first noticed a problem here? 2015? How far back does yes, this that's, go? It's okay. when, when I started doing my research was 2015. And when I started looking at the sex ed and saw all of these new words that, well, it was actually in 2017, I got a um, California Teachers Association, my union's magazine. And it said the gender spectrum on the front of the magazine. And when I read the article, it said, transgender is just one of many genders. And then it started naming all these different pronouns like a here, they, zir. What, and I'm what, like, are they, wow. what do they come up with the pronouns? Who's the guy that, who's the pronoun guy that comes up with these pronouns? I mean, how do they know? <laughs> is it, is it a card game in Sacramento? And it's like, they're taking bets and they're smoking cigars or probably smoking pot. And at, at, it's 3am and they're, they're, how do they come up with the pronouns? I don't understand. They have a I found I don't know, but I found pronouns in the um, World Professional Association of Transgender Care, and I found it in the University of Sub, um, San Francisco Transgender Standards of Transgender Care. Um, but kids can make up their own pronouns. Remember, they can make up their own. This is from Black Lives Matter. It's a coloring sheet and it says everybody has the right to choose their own gender by listening to their own heart and mind. Everyone gets to choose if they are a girl or boy or both or neither or something else and no one else gets to choose for them. Now this goes into when we are teaching now mindfulness in the classrooms where we're teaching kids to listen to their own heart and mind. Mm. So after they get all these gender teachings, now they're supposed to listen to their own heart and mind. And, you know, my faith says that the heart can be very deceptive. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yes. That, that's and, a... and how do we, and how do we distinguish between uh, your conscience and your heart? Uh, you know, your feeling in these situations and what you know to be right and wrong. Um, if you're, if it's all scrambled from the beginning. Right. Well, this Brenda, is absolutely exploiting kids. It's exploiting. Absolutely. This is child abuse. Okay. Absolutely. Um, it, they are exploiting kids' trust. They're they they're impressionable and they're an imaginative. And me personally, I was a tomboy growing up, and I know I would have felt felt prey to this very very easily because I wanted to be a boy. <laughs> did you ever? I got did you ever want after. <laughs> Did you ever I wonder did. if you were a boy? I really wanted to be a boy. 
Well, that's um, an interesting I, statement, though, because saying you want to be is different than saying you wonder if you are, right? Yes. Well, I didn't wonder. Like, I want to be an astronaut, but I don't think I am one. Well, I never <laughs> wondered if I was a boy because those teachings were never given to me. And I came, you know, my parents, um, you know, my yeah. dad was a minister. I had a really good foundation on those things. But even though I acted like a boy and was very boyish, I wore motorcycle shirts and, you know, did all the boy things. Um, my parents never seemed concerned. I mean, it was so much like, so what, you know, she likes to do those things. Big deal. They didn't make a big deal about it. I think today it would have been a big deal. We used to play cowboys and Indians as a kid and Indian is not a gendered term could be men or women. Right. Um, cowboy though is, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, the concept is, uh, it's, it's not, it, it, there's a rough concept of what a cowboy is. Um, you wear the boots, you wear the hat, you got the belt buckle. Uh, maybe you have a gun, uh, something, uh, I think most originally it was, it was a job. It was like, you were actually trying to keep track of cattle. And then later it just became, you're riding around on a horse in the West some, somewhere and, uh, or wherever you are. And, but see a girl could do that too, but we call it a cowgirl. I mean, we didn't call it. If a woman dresses up like that, we wouldn't say you're a cowboy. We, the word was cowgirl. And right. uh, the reason we know cowgirl is because she's female. It's obviously a female. So anyway, it's just, it's just so weird for yeah. me to think of. It, well, this is all a language. Know. It's all a language game is what it mm -hmm. is. Um, yes. This is my website. Okay, okay. So they can go to my website to find information. You've done a lot um, of work here. Jeez. I've done thousands and thousands of hours <laughs> seriously um this is you know showing that the q means questioning so that they can confuse kids um the next now you're picture, you're 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 confident that they're trying to the folks that are putting this stuff together they're trying oh, to yes I, confuse kids like intentional. oh yeah yeah you think so it, it's a way oh yeah I'm, I'm positive about that because um they have on our it's called the, um, okay, the acronym is CHICS survey. So it's CHICS. California. Healthy these are not images that you came up with. You, you took these images from the folks that are putting this together, right? That the no, this image I created. Oh, from you Google created this. images. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, we have a survey that fifth graders and seventh graders take and um, throughout the state and they ask the kids about in seventh grade their gender identity and one of the questions is are you a boy are you a girl are you transgender are you unsure or you don't want to answer so if a kid starts saying unsure you know they can put put in that category and that inflates it inflates their lgbtq category and yes. then they ask all these questions about bullying things that any kid would answer yes to like has somebody given you a dirty look has somebody ever teased you has somebody well of course what kid wouldn't say yes to yeah. one of those what, questions what kid is saying right? no no yeah no, everything is unfair so, yeah me. so once you say yes to any of those bully questions oh now they've just inflated that lgbtq kids are very much bullied Wait, so they need more of a actually, they need more budget. It's a budget issue. So give us more a, money, Sacramento. Are you they're trying definitely. to say that they inflate the statistics? Like they're cheating? <laughs> they're trying oh, to keep their yes, I have so, a lot so, of I think I, I see what you're saying. I think I see what you're saying. Data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, interesting. Is that on your website? Let me give you one example of cheating. So when well, these I, are just I wanted to point out these these oh. groups right on the screen. These are Republican groups. We need to vote these groups out. This, this is what's behind all this stuff. The CTA, total Republican Trump people and uh, ACLU. I think Ronald Reagan came. So let me let group. me talk about the ACLU. Let me talk okay. about the American Civil Liberties Union. So when. Um, I started telling my community as a board member about this stuff that was in this new sex ed. I said, you guys, this is not the sex ed 
you think it is. This is mm. like all these different genders on uh, all these sexualities, including non-monogamous relationships, anal sex, um, oral anal sex, all these stuff, you guys, this is not what you think it is. Okay. So they started speaking up. And when the other board members heard this, we called an emergency meeting and we voted it down to give it more time for us to really look at this. When we did that, ACLU sent our school district a reprimand letter saying that, how dare you? Parents don't have the right to tell districts what they're supposed to do. You have to follow the law, which is AB 329, the California Healthy Youth Act. And then they cited a, a study saying that 89% of parents in California want comprehensive sex education. Oh my gosh. So I, I said, what? So I looked at this UC Berkeley. It came from UC Berkeley. I contacted the professor who did the study. And I said, can you send me that study? I read the study from 2007. There was not one question about gender identity in that parent survey. There was not one question about anal sex, about pansexuality, asexuality, polysexuality, non-monogamous relationships. No, but it didn't the students. match our curriculum. Oh. So it was a lie. So wow. that's ev that is lie. evidence. That's okay. the mens rea there. That's evidence of a guilty mind. That that's evidence of deception. Deception is prima facie evidence that there's a guilty mind in, in criminal law. Now, let me tell you that I sent this evidence because I uh, had hmm. all the evidence. I had the study and I had everything. I sent it to Ed Source, who's hmm. supposed to be our state's number one journalist to give information to the public. Hmm. And to this day, I've sent them so much information to this day they have not, they will put my comments in because I have put my comments about this. They will publish my comments on an article, but they will not expose what's going on here, even though they have all the evidence. I've sent them everything in the last five years. Wow. I've sent them this too, that you're seeing right here. What, so this what is, is going this? On behind, well, Help you us. know, we are, is this we, what for are students? Over, we are over an hour. I don't know about your time. Okay. Um, we got, we have some more time. Um, Brenda, is this, is this for students? Okay. What are we looking at here? Okay. What you're looking at is my school district partners with Planned Parenthood and many school districts do for sex education. Planned Parenthood tells kids, if you have any more questions uh, you can, that you don't feel comfortable asking in class, you can always text. Um, and there's the number right there. Seven, so this seven, is for four. students. Yeah. Okay. You can text. PP now to seven seven four six three six. So I so, did. I oh wait, so the students have cell phones? These little kids have cell phones? Well, this is for seven. This is middle school and high school right now. Okay, I we're skipping now to middle school and high everybody's school. got a cell phone now. Okay. Well, I, so, I had a pay phone when I was a kid, so I, you know it's hard to. I had to use quarters uh, back in my or actually dimes back in my day. So I texted it and I texted and said. Um, I'm, I'm scared about puberty. I'm unsure of my gender. What should I do? And they gave me an auto response. And this is what they sent me. What's your gender? I screenshot it. Mm. They gave me all these genders to choose from. Notice one of them is I want to name my own. I want to make up my own gender. That's what I would have put just to screw with them. But just cause I was like, I was that what kind of kid. And I, if I would have known that they were going to use that to get more money from Denver, because I grew up in Jefferson County Public Schools, Littleton. But man, that's crazy, Brenda. Yeah, this is what they sent me. You so can go smart, to the next smart for you. So smart for you to goes, take a screenshot. This, this is the next thing they sent me. You can go into a chat space. Now, oh, now I wow. That Hold on a second. Spaces. Wait, there's a chat space now for kids? And National. the parents don't know anything about this? No. My experienced staff, it's facilitated. I, so in some places that would be, you know, those would be perverts in this, you know, talking about this kind of thing. Oh my God. Well, but this, the parents don't know about the kids yeah, they don't chatting even know. with a, a government agent that's and, right. and that's someone who's aligned with the political party that the parents uh, maybe mm -hmm. oppose. Correct. Okay. This is shocking. Wow. And then they told me, um, 
about puberty blockers. And then they gave me an opportunity to make an appointment with them. This is all on the same like call? This, yes, this is all on the same call. The same how, text. How, how long ago was this call? When um, did you do this? Mm, was this on well, your phone? Yeah, it was on my phone. Was it years ago it or months ago? About a year ago. I think I did this like a year ago. Okay. Yeah, about a year. Maybe less, but something like that. I see it Maybe was within eight, the year. The time is on, on the top there, 820. Oh, okay, but not the date. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know this is mind blowing. Plannedparenthood.org. What's that? That's their website. So they sent you to Planned Parenthood? Oh my God. Well, I, this is Planned Parenthood. I was, this is their text program. Oh my God. Planned Parenthood's texting program. And this, and I saw that, I saw Planned Parenthood. You know, I just totally missed that. I'm sorry, Brenda. Um, yeah, I Planned saw... Parenthood um, teaches our kids sex ed well, so a you lot can... of, in a lot of school districts. I did not know. That's the part I was missing. Yeah, and then That's they, the in part their I was training, missing. Wow. in their teaching, they'll tell the kids, or maybe the teacher will give a resource saying, hey, if you guys have more questions. So this is not a government. Them. Okay, so it's a government contractor. Okay. I don't know how all that works. Well, they get paid somehow. Yeah. Not, they don't they, do it for they free. They have a five-year contract with the school district. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So what do we got here? Okay. This is a poster that's in all of our student bathrooms. No kidding. And at eye level, starting in preschool all the way through 12th grade, girl bathroom, boy bathroom. And if you see all these partnering agencies for national, the Trevor Project, the National Suicide Hotline. Who's Trevor? Trevor Project is, um, it is a group that helps suicide prevention for LGBTQ youth. Was that originally a guy, a, a guy that killed himself because is yes. it's named after him? Okay. Yes. Yes. That's sad. Yes. I'm not aware. So of on the bottom, story. you see, we've okay. got the red heart on the top, but we've got the rainbow heart on the bottom. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. yeah that's, but that's see, cool. all of these agencies all endorse unlimited genders. They all endorse unlimited sexualities. This is what Trevor Project says. You can go to my next slide. The Trevor Project's 2019 National Survey on LGBTQ youth mental health found that respondents use more than a hundred different terms to label their sexuality, exclamation point. Okay, so we're saying this with enthusiasm. Identities like omnisexual, abrosexual, scoliosexual may also describe a form of attraction to more than one gender. Though these identities are not necessarily synonymous or interchangeable with the word bisexual, multisexuality refers to all identities that include romantic and sexual attraction to people of more than one gender. That is so confusing. That's that's confusing for adults, let alone kids. I mean, can, I can't that's imagine. Point, that's the point. This is a power deal because what they want to do is they want to give kids all these new words, including critical race theory. OK, all these new words. So then when they bring these things up, their parents are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, and then and they like, look oh, like well, clan you know, members. You don't, you don't you're, you're not like, with it. You really aren't mom, that and smart, dad. mom and dad. Yeah, I gotcha. That makes sense. You're not. I, like, I see you're that. In the, you're in the olden days, man. So it's basically a war against the parents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I see. They're giving the, all the power to the kids, taking away the power from the parents in our laws as well. I'm going to go back to that bathroom sign because um, let's let's get this clear. Not just anybody can go into a public school bathroom, first of all. You can't even get into the school anymore. I mean, back in my day, you could just walk onto the campus and um, yeah. you probably would be confronted by somebody uh, asking warmly why you're there, how can you help? But now the schools are pretty much, um, the security is different. And and then secondly, you can't just walk into a bathroom. When I taught in LAUSD, I, as a, as a professor, I couldn't even go into the bathroom. They were locked. 
I had to get somebody to unlock them during, like, if I had to go to the bathroom really quick, when, even when the kids were in class. Well, anyway, um, so then when it comes to posting something that you can't just post anything. So in other words, I couldn't just uh, post like, um, hey, uh, Bible study is meeting in room, blah, 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 during third period or after whatever, or or uh, the NRA is having some uh, rifle cleaning uh, training uh, over there in the gym. And we're going to um, maybe do some archery after that and some ax throwing. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can't, you know, even if they, they would take that down immediately. Um, be, I, certainly anything political, like, um, you know, some Republican organization, you can't just put that stuff up there. There's no way. And that's how it is on the college campuses too. You, you need permission to post this stuff. So this board, is the board voted it in. I asked my principals when it first started coming into my school, um, which was about, it was before COVID. It was before the lockdown that it started showing up. And I asked the principals, Hey, when did we get these posters? They said, what posters? I'm like, didn't you see the, these metallic posters in all the bathrooms? Like, no, they didn't even know they went in. They just, they wow. just installed them all. The principal so didn't know it. Is it the board that has authority over this or is it the principal that has? No, the, the board, the board is the one that voted all these in and the principals didn't even know they were in the bathrooms until after the fact. That's crazy. Can the principal take them down or the uh, vice no. principal? No. What about a teacher or a coach? Coach can't take well, them down. I mean, no. Okay. Just ju because to. I know this is really basic for you and you know everything like this, but I'm just, I'm asking these kind of questions just because I guarantee you somebody's watching this that wants to ask that question. So I'm trying to ask. Okay. So what do we got here? This is, is this another poster? Um, this was just showing you all these different ways that these outside organizations are reaching kids on virtual platforms. Um, oh. It's Instagram, it's chat spaces, it's text messaging. It's, oh there's so many ways that kids are getting reached on virtual platforms. And every kid has like an iPad now. Um, yeah. And the, the schools scary. provide it. Uh, they provide that right, that right there is scary. Equity. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, geez, I'm not very good at this, as you can see. No, you're doing great. Uh, okay, well, thank now you. in in Orange County. Um, okay, Lucas, you said that you're in Irvine. Um, no, I'm in Fullerton. Oh, Fullerton. Okay, so you're familiar with Chalk Hospital. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Children's Hospital of Orange County, very reputable um, hospital. When I was a board member there was something that came across on our agenda as saying Chalk Hospital wanted to supply mental health workers for free into our school district of 27,000 students. And to me, I found that very unusual. And our superintendent was super happy about it saying, isn't this awesome? We get this for free. I'm like, well, nothing's free. And I think we should look into this a little more. So I called um, somebody that I know very well in Chalk, who is a social worker. And I said, I know Chalk has a new um, pediatric psych psychiatric ward, but is there a gender clinic? And they said, yeah, we, we opened about a year ago. I said, oh, well, I'd like to talk to the head endocrinologist and um, can you connect me with like the clinical social worker of the gender clinic? And she said, no problem. So I was able to email back and forth with them and they were very forthcoming because they felt like, you know, I would vote for them to work with my district. And from these emails that I have in writing, um, it says that they are socially transitioning children at the age of five and medically transitioning kids at the age of nine in our hospital here in Orange County. Oh my gosh. Wow. Our, I don't think our Orange County residents know this. No, they can't. And, and they, I asked, how are your mental health workers trained under what protocol? And they sent me um, the world professional, I'm sorry, W. Yeah, I think it's World Professional Association of Transgender Health 
And in reading it, I saw that basically they only affirm no matter what, you only affirm a child's gender identity. And they always, they push medical um, puberty blockers as the answer, you know? And if parents don't go along with it, their job is to teach parents and train them how to support it. And if they don't go along with it, they're seen as being abusive. Yeah. I noticed the word allies on the screen there. That's a political term. That's a war term. That's a term from warfare. Interesting. And that it, the significance of what I'm saying there is this is not a collaborative term. This is not a term of inclusion. No. This is a term of exclusion. This is a term of mapping out alliances politically and militarily. In other uh, words, yes. to try to take control. The, the point of warfare is control. And um, if you're not an ally, what are you? You're an enemy. Oh, very good. That's very perceptive. You are totally 100% right because um, our social justice standards, K through 12, were written by Southern Poverty Law Center. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Southern Poverty Law Center has a hate map. And on that hate map is Pacific Justice Institute, um, uh, Liberty Council, and Alliance Defending Freedom. These are all law firms that fight yeah. for religious freedom. Um, and so yes. I actually contacted them because they send magazines to our schools. It used to be called Teaching Tolerance. I contacted the CEO, the chief editor, and I said, how do you say you teach tolerance when anyone who doesn't agree with you, you compare to the KKK? Yeah. They actually, and I don't know if it's because of my discussion, but they changed their name. Interesting. They changed it to learning for justice. Because you know, this, they will not be tolerant. This people. isn't, this is adversarial. It's absolutely adversarial. A absolutely adversarial. And and the projection of hate, I mean, because I, I, I talked to, the, I've had these discussions in my classrooms where I try to, I teach critical thinking. That's what I teach. So I'm teaching kids to look mm -hmm. at this and, and go, okay, as you're critical, you, you students are critical of, uh, for example, religion, okay, or whatever. Um, you can look at religion with a critical lens. Can you look at this? As is if it was a religion, look at it as with the same critic critical lens, and then they're a little bit afraid to do it because they're they're afraid that. Uh, but just like you would you would if you were uh, criticizing a religion, right? I mean, you would be that's that's kind of scary. But um, yeah. but the word hate has been redefined. The word hate has been redefined to mean disagreement. And the ironic thing about this, the, the, well, the, the annoying thing is, is that it's only disagreement one way. That's hate. Like, of course they disagree with you, but then it's, is it hate? Wait, are you hating me? Um, but if you, if you disagree with them, then it's hate. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was really good. What you pointed out about allies. Thank you. Let me go to the next slide here. Where am I? These are really helpful uh, i mean they uh, use the word question. comrade too oh really no are way. you serious yeah they do comrades yes that's a that is a communist word it's a, yeah um so this flag is, is very symbolic because what they're showing here is that skin color such as black and brown is equated with unlimited gender choices and unlimited sexualities that's what that means. Okay. That's what that means. So if you don't agree with that, you are racist. I would have no idea how to interpret this if I just saw this like in a men's room in uh, Angel Stadium or something. I guess I would need a number to text from Plant Parenthood. I could, I could figure that out maybe or something. Are you talking about the flag? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know how to interpret this. There's no, I mean, I trust your interpretation. But I don't, yeah. looks like we lost Curtis there. <laughs> oh, um, well, I mean, you've got the rainbow flag that stands for the sexualities. And then you've got the red, the, the pink and the blue that stands for the gender 
the genders, and oh. then the black and brown stands for the skin color. So what's the, what's the white stand for? Um, that's part of the transgender flag. But see, they changed the definition of transgender. It, in the sex ed 2020 standards, it says transgender is an umbrella term of many mm. genders. Wow. And those genders are ever expansive and evolving. So there's some kind of source that helps you interpret this, what you're seeing here, this flag. Yes, because I've read the sex ed 2020 standards and all these different. And they, they explain this. Okay. Well, I mean, I kind, I kind of put it together with between the ethnic studies and the, you know, with them. You the have, color. you got, you have a lot of background knowledge that helps you with this, I think. What's the fist about? Thank you. What's that well, all the about? fist is social justice. It means that, uh -huh. you know, if you're going to be an ally, anti-racism means angry. that yeah. it, it's not just that you, you know, tolerate or go along or, you know, it's not just about tolerance. It's about you fight for fight their rights. You fight for the sexual rights. A fist is violent. A fist yeah. is fighting yeah. and violent. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, Martin, so, in the ethnic so that's studies, okay. <laughs> in the ethnic studies model curriculum, Martin Luther King Jr. was actually called passive and docile. Okay. He was not elevated as one of our black leaders in our ethnic studies, okay, because he was too passive and too docile. Okay. So you have to be, you have to have a fist. You can't be inclusive. You have to be adversarial. And you have to be violent if necessary. If necessary, absolutely. Gotcha. Okay. Makes yeah. Sense. So I mean, this is. I mean, this was the last one here. Just kind of shows you it. Uh, spiritual abuse is in our um, health framework, and it's, it's defined by using religion to justify um, rigid gender roles. I mean. Using religious to justify abuse. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, abuse is basically just not affirming. It's not it, what we really think of abuse. Like, yeah. Abuse there. So they've redefined abuse as well. Yeah. Abuse just means it. opposing them politically. That's what that means. Well, and, and this would be not going along with unlimited gender identities, not going along with all these different sexualities. In other words, if you have a belief, an orthodox belief, um, according to the Quran or according to the Bible or according to the Torah or the Book of Mormon, you know that marriage is between a man and a woman and yep. that gender is based on biological, you know, male and female, that it's God ordained, that would be considered spiritual abuse if you don't accept, if your child wants to go with something else, mm. even if it's your five-year-old child. Wow. Brenda, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to show people how to get to something. I'm going to go to Google scholar. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to run. Oh, okay. Okay. But listen, I'm, I'm available anytime. And um, I'd love to know also, we if you don't really mind, appreciate what, what this is what I was talking about the Muslim one. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And this is the latest um, in October. That was our latest conference. Beyond the binary, identity and imagining possibilities. I see the CTA. C yeah, uh, C that was, which are you a member? I believe. You can go I to think these I'm conferences. All, I think I'm already, I think I, well, I, I've gotten the mailer for a long time. I don't, I don't, well, then I have the mailer recently. But. You're a member if you're a professor um, at a, yeah. which, which university? Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure because I've taught at multiple Cal States and multiple okay. uh, community colleges. I'm okay. not sure which one was the original one that got me on the list. Okay. So let me just tell you, you can go to any of these conferences. Okay. You should be getting emails from them when they tell you where the conferences is. And I would absolutely recommend you start going and you oh. can hear it with your own ears. Wow. Yeah, you should do that. Are these expensive? Palm Springs. Hmm. Um, no, if it's your first time going, you're 
totally paid for, which means you get your hotel room paid and gourmet dinners and gourmet meals. Who's paying for this? Your union. Really? You're paying about a thousand dollars a year to be in it. Oh my. I mean, oh. I got out of the union, but then I just yeah. recently rejoined. I recently rejoined because I want to be a voice and I can't be a voice if I'm not in it. Mm -hmm. So, and I want to be able to still go to some conferences. Oh, okay. Well, that's so, smart. So I, I, I respect to teachers, that. I suggest to teachers, if they're not going to do anything, get out. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, you know, subsidize your money for this stuff. But if you're going to do something to be a voice in your union, then stay in. Okay. That's my, that's my recommendation. I, I definitely see where you're coming from. And I, I think that, um, teachers, coaches, administrators, um, I don't think that our administrators aren't part of the CTA. No. Um, but, but I think counselors are psychologists. No, I don't know. I think. It, yeah. So would, if a, if a, a vice principal wanted to go to one of these, could they go to one? Even if they're not in the CTA? I a principal? don't know. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, if they went, they would have to like pay the non-member dues, which gotcha. it would be a lot more expensive for a non-member to okay. go. Yeah. Thank okay. you so much for everything you've given us here. Uh, Brenda, you've given us so much to think about and so much to be concerned about and uh, backed all of it up with uh, stuff. Let me show your website again. It's brendaforkids.com. You can go to the, this is what it looks like on the homepage. And there's a way to contact you. There's your, there's your background there. And yeah, there's a contact button on there. Yes. There's a contact button down at the bottom. Yeah. And there's a, there's a way that for people to get in more information. Okay, cool. Well, I really appreciate you spending the time on your holiday, uh, President's Day. And of course, Curtis has five kids and it's a holiday over there. So mm -hmm. he's got five kids to manage today. Uh, ordinarily, we yeah, do I'm sure. they're, they're in school. But um, yes. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your expertise. And we're, I'm impressed with how much you know, and just how calm you are. And were you always this calm? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I mean, been... you're so professional and calm. And yeah, it's amazing. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Mather. Coming from you, that's a high compliment. Thank you. I'll take that. I'll take it. I'll take any compliment I get. <laughs> well, let me stop the screen share and just uh, wish you have wish you well. And I look forward. Can we have you back on at some point to help us? Sure, absolutely, okay. absolutely. And my videos give a lot of information, so I hope people yep. will check those out. Okay. And we'll can I just put that. a little plug in real quick that there is a movie coming out on Monday, March fourteenth, um, one day only. It's a documentary. Okay. Called "Whose Kids Are They." Monday, and March 14th, March 14th, Monday, whose kids are they? It's showing all over uh, nationally and it'll be in the I'm theaters in that documentary. I am in that documentary um, along with a lot of other people. It, you mean it'll be like at AMC? Yes. Okay. Oh, just one day though. Yes. Okay. So I guess, is it the kind of thing where it depends on how it does and if it does well, it'll go longer maybe? Yes. In, in fact, if you Googled it, if you Googled it, you could just easily play the trailer if you wanted to, but anytime. Okay. Um, okay. I will tell us the name one more time of it. Um, whose kids are they? Whose kids are they? And it's, I'm going to Google that. Yeah, you can and Google you, it. Okay. I'll it's do that. by um, Phantom Events who, yeah, Phantom Events. Whose kids are they? Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Brenda. You bet. Thank you. God bless. Bye-bye. That's a lot right there. A lot of redefinitions of terms, a lot of um, projection of hate onto the other side in order to gain power over children, future voters in order to alienate parents. 
you know, a lot of this has been couched as a religion issue. And I want to point out that um, in some sense, that's a little unfair to our atheist friends, because there's a lot of people that have serious problems with this who would not consider themselves religious necessarily. It's not that they can point to some sacred text that they respect, but they just can think critically. They can think for themselves. And in our constitutional law, if you, um, if you stuff the argument into religion, then that gives it legal power. But I just want to say that I don't think that that's necessarily the best way forward to try to scrunch everything I understand the incentive, but trying to push every put everything into religion, I think, in some sense, distorts the problem. Because if if kids have a gender, it's not. Uh, I mean, it would be any kid, <laughs> right? Religious or not, it would be any kid. It, it's a human issue. It's a human rights issue. Parents have a right to raise their kids the way that they see fit. And they use their minds and their hearts to do that. And um, the Democratic Party, she's very nice. But it, this is totally the Democratic Party. This is not the Republican Party. That's behind this. So how do you oppose it? I mean, you, you do need Democrats to come along and say, hey, we don't agree with this. There's a lot of Democrats that don't know about it and would have a problem with it. And there's a lot of Democrats that, that um, would come on board with uh, opposing it. Um, and, and, I, and again, I don't think it's a religion thing necessarily because people can think for themselves for crying out loud. I think I teach logic and critical thinking and just getting students the, the confidence that they're not going to go to woke hell, uh, you know, after class uh, for questioning, <laughs> the questioning is, uh, is quite a job. It takes a lot of courage to do this. Thank you so much for joining us for the Republican professor. My sidekick is gone and we'll see you next time.